Welcome to the CrewCast, the Cruise Live podcast about video games and all things crew. Join us and many of your favorite crew members as we review games, talk about the new crew series, answer your questions, and much more. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of the CrewCast. Hey guys, welcome to episode 34 of the Crewcast. Today we have myself, Gizmo, Danny, and Bellbuzz. This is for the 17th of May, 2014. And we're going to go straight into the news. All right, so a biggie here in Crewville. A great game that we all love, and we've been begging for a new version. Not that we dislike the old version, but it's always been talked about, but never official. And now we have heard Killing Floor 2 officially announced. Nice. Yeah, this is really cool to hear that they're finally making a new one. Yeah, Tripwire, definitely a indie-ish studio. Very, very small compared to the big names, but honestly puts out some good stuff uh you gotta like them they've been very supportive of the of the gaming community uh killing floor 2 sounds awesome so far i mean all the stuff i mean this thing's going to be so bloody and gory uh they've come up with a trick <laughs> to actually like keep the blood and gore that's like on the ground from kills throughout like all the waves or whatever versus oh. just kind of going away on its own and not impacting the system and that's generally why games of this type have stuff despawn after a while because enough bodies, enough things on the floor starts to tank the game's frame rate uh, because you got to keep track of all that stuff. But they've come up with a way of getting around that and uh, still going to be using the Unreal Engine, obviously a much newer Unreal Engine. But uh, what do you guys think on what you've read about it? Looks so good. From the screenshots, it looks amazing. Yeah, it definitely looks a lot more crisper. It looks like they've done tons of like animations for the weapons, uh, uh, tons of more like perk leveling. It's not going to be just six levels and you're done. Uh, they're going to have a lot more complexity to that. So I guess the big question, if Piper was here, would be, will there be a female character? I think there will be. So that's one thing I have not seen mention of. But will they have a female character at launch? Let's hope so. Will the traitor make a comeback? Will we still have all the same kind of like characters? I mean, characters we have now, will they all make reappearances? Will we, if we have unlocked certain ones, will they carry over? Will we have to start fresh? Will characters all still have the British accent for the most part? I'm assuming that they're going to kind of stick with that genre, that realm, that location. Uh, but it looks it's just it just looks really good. And I'll I'll put the teaser trailer up on the screen here while we were talking about this. So you guys have already seen that, but that's what that is. So we're really looking forward to it. Sounds like maybe late summer uh, they're going to possibly have like an early release in alpha that you can kind of buy early, probably cheaper, uh, much like. Minecraft, much like uh, Starbound, DayZ even. So looking forward to it. We'll definitely be playing it. Uh, I don't know if I noticed anything about player counts, if they're going to allow more than uh, six players. They didn't say anything in the article I read about it, about I mean, that, a player that would, count. That would be interesting to know, is if we're going to be able to have more than six, because uh, we have more than six crew that generally like to play this, and then we have people that want to play with us. And uh, it makes it nice if you can still level and everything with other people playing with you when you go over that six. I was I was going to say that I don't think they probably will have that that um, more than six thing. I think it's probably going to be limited to probably six, just because gameplay wise it makes sense. I mean, I think we're a bit different in the sense that we have a lot of people that like to play it with us, but I, I don't think it makes sense leveling wise to have it open. It'd be nice to have a mode where. You can actually play it properly rather than, I think, because didn't use like a mod thing that allowed us to play with more people. No, you can, 
I mean, you can tell it more players. It's all right. Okay. I mean, it just the leveling and all that stuff stops, and and I use mods to try to like fix issues we have when we had more than six, like the being blocked by the trader, and then of course they ended up implementing that themselves. Uh, but we had some tricks we used to force leveling when we were trying to do tournaments, so that we could force everybody to be at a certain perk level. So it really looks good. Um, can't wait for it. Hopefully it hits here this summer. Uh, it seems like they were much more quiet about it, and I think they wanted to wait to really talk about it until they felt they were closer, which I think is a smart idea. So hopefully things continue, and I think, you know, if there's a company that I'd like to see do well, it's Tripwire. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So a few other uh, things in the news here right now. Um, both related to Microsoft, and I'm going to mention them both before we chat about them. Actually, there's really three things, but uh, one of them kind of goes along with the second one. But first is that Microsoft is now going to be selling the Xbox One without a Kinect, which they claimed they would never do last year <laughs> three, and basically up until yesterday or so when this started leaking, um, there was never going to be an option to sell it without it. So that's been announced or leaked or whatever. Also, they've mentioned, uh, and this is definitely, I mean, these are all official, but uh, they've removed the gold restriction for Netflix and Hulu, which is something you could do with uh, a PS3, PS4, even a Wii, Wii U. You could watch Netflix and all that type of stuff without having to pay any, any fee. With the 360, if you want to use Netflix, if you want to use Hulu, you had to be a gold member. Uh, and that was kind of kind of stinky but they finally gotten rid of that restriction they've also announced along with the gold that uh, people who are gold members will get games with gold on the xbox one and if you're familiar with that or not familiar with it games for gold on the 360 if you're a gold uh, subscriber to xbox live you get a free game on the first of the month and you get a free game on the 16th of the month and Right when this aired, the new game for the 360 should have come out. They're not starting it till June, I believe, for the Xbox One. I think a difference between the two programs, though, is on the Xbox 360 with Games for Gold, you own those games. Once you download them or claim them for free, they are yours. Even if you let your Xbox subscription go away, uh, they're yours. I believe on the Xbox One, it sounds like, like on the PS3, three and ps4 when your subscription to their xbox live or ps plus expires those games are no longer playable so your guys thought on the connect flip-flop the gold restrictions games I, for gold and all that stuff i find it hilarious that they they said that they weren't going to do it but then they have um and personally i'm more inclined to buy it without the connect it's because i would never use connect I think I would buy it with a Kinect, so it doesn't really impact me anywhere. I think the biggest thing, I mean, I already have one, and I have a Kinect, and the Kinect is awesome from the standpoint of being able to turn the thing on, being able to control things. Uh, it is really cool. It doesn't work 100%, but it works pretty darn well. The fact that that camera is also an IR blaster, so it can control your TV and your receivers and different things also, um, is really cool. Uh, the camera is just amazing. Uh, the level of uh, detail it has, picking up your your face facial features, your your heart rate, and all that stuff. Very cool stuff. Great low lighting, bright lighting. The thing that upsets me is, and I agreed with Microsoft when they said that this was an integral part, because they were going to say that there's no way to pull it from the system. It has to be there. And the great thing about that was going to be that developers would know that a Kinect exists. So if there was a reason to use the Kinect with your title, you could do it knowing that everybody could use those features if they wanted to. Now developers are going to be like, okay, everybody who's bought an Xbox One at, up to this date has a Kinect, but there's going to be people who are going to buy it without a Kinect. So do we want to support the Kinect? because not everybody's going to have it now. So that kind of sucks. I guess the only good thing is, and I'm betting Microsoft will spin this, they'll say, look, we sold 5 million or however many Xbox Ones. 
Those all have connects. That's a huge market base. Developers would be stupid to not support it. And hopefully that will then drive people who don't buy a connect initially to then go out and buy it later. Uh, but there's enough of an install base out there that people are going to support it developer-wise. At least I hope. It, for me, that's what happens. But I'm sure that's what they're going to say to spin it. But this is a complete flip-flop on their part. And part of it, I think, is just sales. I mean, the the PS4 is outselling them. Not, a, not like dramatically, but by a decent amount. So you know they're trying to reduce costs. But I think they've said, I think they've said like 70% of PS4 people buy the camera for the PS4. But go ahead. Would this make the Xbox One the same price as the PS3 then, a uh, PS4? Uh, it's going to be, I think, 350 pounds. I'm not sure what the PS4 is in, in your guys' currency. But here in the States, yes, it's going to make them on, on price-wise the same. Okay. So, I mean, it's definitely to, to compete price-wise. It's just funny that if 70% of PS4 users are buying the camera, um, I mean, 30% aren't. I don't have a camera for the PS4. Uh, and I, there hasn't been any real compelling reason to, to do it because I bought nothing that even uses a camera. Um, and the camera, honestly, is not that nice. It doesn't have as good a microphone built into it. It doesn't have as good of visuals. I mean, the... Xbox One camera is amazing. I mean, it's a it's a nice device. So, but I'm glad to see them come out with the uh, re- remove the restrictions on gold. I mean, this way, if you are a Netflix a Netflix uh, subscriber, you don't have to buy gold. And that was one of the problems with me. I had we had a um, a 360, the old original one, and I had the new one. The old one died, but I would have loved to have taken the old one when it was alive. Uh, put it in, say, Lizzie's room, and then she could use it for gaming, but she could watch uh, Netflix. But in order for her to do that, I would have had to have a gold for her and for for me, because as soon as she logged into gold, it would knock me off. So having shared gold doesn't work well on the 360 still. It works much better on the Xbox One. They've changed the policies on that, so you can have multiple consoles if you wanted to and all that, but... um, kind of annoying so that's great that they removed that and i think it's nice that like sony they're starting to offer free games for the xbox one and they really didn't offer anything up up until coming up here on june 1st when something will be available i don't don't know if they've announced what it's going to be yet yeah that's interesting as well what games would it be on the xbox one because there isn't a whole lot of games for the xbox one at the moment well, I mean, it'll probably be some of the initial launch title stuff, maybe, or indie stuff. I mean, when you looked at, like, um, the PS4, it was Contrast. It was uh, Don't Starve when it when it came out. Um, a lot of it's more indie-ish stuff. Still good games, by all means, but um, there haven't been... You know, it's not like Sony's giving out Killzone, Shadowfall, whatever it's called, for free. So, And, of course, both of them still are doing the one thing that I hate. And this and it's the same thing with the 360 PS3. Digital copies are pretty much exactly the same price as the physical product. And I think that's bogus. And I mean, I know why they do it, but I think it stinks. Yeah, it should be um, cheaper, shouldn't it, if it's on um, digital? Yeah. I mean, I think what they should try to do, because I know companies like GameStop and Walmart and all these all these brick and mortar stores. I mean, they have web fronts too, but these brick and mortar stores that sell a lot of games don't want to see digital. But I think what they should just do is you should be able to go to GameStop and they should just be able to sell like a little card that says Halo 5. And then you can go home and hold it up to your connect or type in the code and you got it. Or you can, you can, uh, you know, download it live just pay for it live if you physically want to go to a store you can still get stuff it's just you're you're buying the card if you want to get it digitally and save money so they can compete they can say hey look you want to buy the physical cd in box here's halo 5 59.99 you want to get it digitally we can even sell you that here too even you know because we want to still be able to compete with the digital sales so here's halo 5 for 49.99 and it's just a little card you peel it when you get home and you scan it or enter the code. I mean, I think that 
keeps the brick and mortar stores in the game because they're completely afraid of digital for for good reason. But that would allow them to compete. Yeah, yeah that would I make the most sense. I don't get why they don't just do that. I mean, I think it's just a culture in the in the industry and GameStop and even Walmart and Best Buy, all these places here in the States are all now doing used games. I mean, you can go to Walmart now and they'll buy your games back. So you can't buy back a digital game. And that's that's the problem. And yeah. when Microsoft talked about options for you to do that, people went crazy. So they dropped that quickly. So I, I think that's what GameStop and them look at. Because I think they make a lot more money off resale. Because if Dandy says, I beat Halo 5 in the first four hours, it takes it back to GameStop, and they're like, okay, look, you paid 59 bucks for it. We're going to give you, you know, give you nineteen ninety nine, And they're going to turn around and sell it for 40 bucks used to somebody else. They make a lot of profit off of uh, used games. But I think eventually you're going to see this. You're going to see the, the, the brick-and-mortar stores selling digitally either through their own storefront where you can just get the code. You don't have to even go anywhere. Just go to GameStop, GameStop.com, do your purchase, just like you would if you were in the Xbox Live or the, the Sony Marketplace. So it's going to get there eventually. But I just right now it stinks. There's been a few talk. Uh, there are certain things where Sony's uh, talking about dropping the price for digital, and that's what Microsoft's talking about for gold people will get discounts. So we'll see. All right, so let's move on to crew news. One of the biggest pieces of news is a favorite series for many of our fans will be coming back in about a week or so. What is it? Hmm, I don't know. Do you guys know? Yep. Forsaken World. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's not. not. So something's coming back. You guys should be excited. I know we are, even though Danny's not sure. So look for that uh, coming out here shortly. Uh, also, we've been trying to get more organized on our streaming. We mean, we've been streaming a ton, and we enjoyed everybody who comes out and, and hangs out and plays with us, talks with us, chats with us, all that stuff. But we're, we're, we're trying to fine-tune our times and try to make them more consistent because I know people have complained that they don't know when we're streaming. They don't get notified quick enough. They don't get the alerts or the tweets soon enough. Um, so... We're going to try to work on a schedule, but right now we've, we've attempted a schedule and it's been too hard. We've had technical issues with people who can't stream because of their internet. So it's still an ongoing process. Uh, myself, I really enjoy the streaming. If you haven't checked out our other channel, you know, the crew after dark, we call it, which is kind of more of the edgier stuff. There's nothing really crazy on there right now, but I've been putting up almost every day clips from our live streams pretty much good time, times when we've killed people, gotten killed, gotten kamikaze you name it. Um, lots of different little moments. So uh, people have been saying that they've been liking those. So I'll keep putting them up. But if you haven't checked out that, go over, check the link in the description of this video to, the, to go to that channel. Subscribe if you like that kind of stuff and look for more highlights and also more stuff. We'll probably do some games on there that are a little bit more edgy than our 100% family or friendly stuff on the main channel. I don't know how you guys been feeling about the streaming. I've enjoyed it a ton. It's been uh, it's been really fun. Yeah, it's nice to like chat with people, and um, I think streaming is uh, a nice way for us to actually chat with people while we play. And Giz can actually play now on most of these games because Giz has yeah. a new computer. Yeah, um, it's it's really really great to be able to actually play these games. I think I've been in uh, like a gaming limbo for the past uh, few months. So yeah, thanks again to everyone that donated to help me get a new computer. Um, like when I first loaded up Armor, literally, <laughs> I compared it to when I played it on my old one. It just oh so much more cleaner and crisper. Like getting like forty FPS compared to like five basically. So keep looking out for that. I mean, twitchtv.com slash Minecraft crew. We'll try to get more organized, probably starting in June. um, I'm hoping that we can maybe have a a, a schedule kind of locked in better, that we do everything we can to meet. That way, 
if you have trouble getting the notifications, you can literally just know that at this time on this day, we're going to be streaming. So a uh, theme build server. When we record this, obviously there's a theme currently going on, but when this airs, it's going to be a new theme. So I'll let these guys talk about the current theme. And if they know what the new theme is, they can reveal it here because it won't air until after it's already switched. Um, Daddy? Uh, we haven't decided, I don't think, yet on a new theme. Current theme? Yeah. Well, the, the current theme is movies. Um, we've had a ton of people already on building, and some of the builds are awesome. Yeah, I love seeing all these builds, um, builders that come on and, and just these such creativeness. Um, every week, it's 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 crazy, crazy good. So we don't know the theme yet, so we can't reveal it. Uh, that's um, shall we pick one quickly? Um, let's go with. Uh, yeah. What if what could we do a theme? Could we do a theme like gaming consoles? Ooh. Consoles. Sure. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's go with that. Consoles. New theme. Confirmed. There you go. There you have it. Now, one thing we did do last night, and Danny was with me, uh, we've done this, I did it once before, but I think it was mainly me. Uh, maybe, I think Mario was there, actually. But I went on at the end of the live stream onto the theme server, and we flew around and just looked while people were building and just looked at some of the builds in their current states. And I threw out two, it's too late now, but I threw out two suggestions on the live stream that I'm so upset that I haven't seen yet. One of them, probably nobody knows about. But I was like, why is there not a Borg cube? Movies, and you get a square location, a cube to build in. Board cube would fit perfectly. And the other thing was the little Rubik's Cube-like box thing from the movie Hellraiser. Which is very Borg cube-like also, but that's just me. Many people probably haven't seen those, that series. <laughs> it was like an 80s, 90s series of scary movies. That's Pinhead. Was the uh, uh, I've seen Pinhead. Yeah. So, but yeah, no one built those yet. We'll see if me talking about it on the live stream drove somebody to try to get on there and build at least a board cube. Would be cool. Piper hasn't built yet, so maybe she'll go on there. She we need a Star that Trek. Movie. We need a Star Trek theme. Engage. So uh, I mean, that's pretty much. Uh, we got lots of stuff going on. It's hard to, you know, we've been streaming um, Payday, the heist. They're not streaming, but recording, doing episodes of that. That map is awesome. We've been continuing to play um, the uh, Hexit, which is really nice. Uh, well, Better Than Wolves is still still ongoing, although you'll see a series we're going to be taking, kind of I'll give you a little teaser. We're going to be taking kind of a break on that one, but you'll see a, another episode or two of that before that happens. And we have a new series coming out that's legit that is a kind of a novel idea someone came up with and that we've experimented with it. And it's fun. It's hard. But you'll see that. So lots of cool stuff. All right. So let's move on to the main segment. And that is E3 predictions. Now maybe Danny can figure out and tell us what date E3 is while I'm mentioning this. But E3 is a gaming convention. That happens every year. It's in L.A. And all the big gaming companies go there. This is when you get to see Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo do their conference, their press conferences, you know, their big reveals. EA probably will have one. Some of the big publishing houses like Ubisoft may have stuff too. But everybody will announce their, their stuff and show off their games and be a ton of gaming news happening. But we're going to give our predictions. But Danny, when is you 3 June 10th through June 12th. So there you go. So a little less than a month from when this episode airs. But we're going to give predictions now to see how much like Nostradamus we are. So I'm going to go first because I kind of hit the crew with this theme and this podcast out of the blue. And I'm going to say, let's start with Microsoft on my, and we'll talk about them. 
I think, I mean, obviously this is Phil Spencer, who was just appointed the new head of the Xbox division. This guy, I hope, is the chosen one. He's actually a gamer, so I think it's good that they put this guy in charge. But this is his moment to fix the ship that had a hole in it. And it might be still leaking, it might not be, we're not sure. Uh, but he's going to be pushing games, games, games. I don't think you're going to hear a lot about anything that isn't gaming from Microsoft. They've kind of said that they're going to be gaming, gaming, gaming. So I think obviously the first thing they're going to do is damage control. They've took away the Kinect now. You know, they've dropped the price and all that because of this. They've, you know, put Phil in charge. They've removed that, removed that Don guy, whatever his name was, who was awful in my opinion. Um, and didn't understand gamers. So I think damage control is the big thing for them. Halo 5, obviously. Gears of War, I think. We may hear some stuff about that because they bought out that franchise. Um, I'm wondering if they're going to do a VR option. You know, because Sony has their VR thing that they've announced. Oculus Rift, obviously bought by uh, Facebook, which was in our last podcast. So will Sony or will Microsoft feel pressured by Sony and, and Facebook taking Oculus Rift? Will they feel uh, pressured to have a VR option? Will they partner with Oculus Rift or something in Facebook? But what do you guys think from a Microsoft standpoint? Um, Microsoft, I think there's definitely going to be something Halo, whether it's the reboot of Halo 2 or it's a Halo 5, which... There was a trailer from, uh, I, at least I think it's Halo 5, which there was a trailer for last year. Um, I definitely think there'll be something like new, like a new IP of some sort come out. Um, obviously Gears, maybe some stuff for like Connect. There's always stuff for Connect anyway, but like some new stuff for Connect as well. Thoughts on Microsoft Gears? Um, well, there probably it's going to be some Halo stuff, there's no doubt. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, <I> Microsoft <laughs> Halo stuff. Yeah, I, I, I mean, they they can't not uh, do something about Halo. I would love to see like the original Halos updated to work on like Xbox One with the graphics and the technology and just be like a bundle where you buy it for thirty nine ninety nine, you get like, you know, the first four halos or the first three, at least something of that nature. I think that would be a smart move, something that would be fun to do and, you know, revisit them with better graphics or detail. Probably not going to happen. Uh, one thing I'd love to see them do. And this is something that's, you know, Sony's got their approach for, but it would be really nice to see like, when they had the the original Xbox, not the 360, but that big black tank, uh, the original one, that system was PC based. You know, it was Intel architecture. But then when they came out with the 360, they switched to this Power PC, the old uh, Macintosh, um, like back when those first uh, Power Macs came out. Uh, they're using that technology. So none of the original games could work out of the box. Kind of like when you went from PS1 to PS2, you could still play your stuff. So Microsoft on the 360 chose to emulate the older hardware so you could still play older titles. And you can't play every old Xbox game on the 360, but you can play a lot of the good ones, most of them. And probably, I'd say 75-80% of the titles are playable. When you get the Xbox One, you can't play anything from the 360. It'd be nice to see them come out with some way of running some of these big 360 titles on the Xbox One. Sony is choosing to go the route where you're going to be able to use that streaming service to be able to do it. Not a fan of that myself. Not that it's a streaming service. And it may not, you know, I still have doubts about that being very good. But even if it was good, it's not going to be a feature where I can say, look, I've got for the PS3, The Last of Us let me play that on the PS4 through the streaming service. It'll say, no, 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 you have to buy that game or rent that game to play it. Even though I already own it, it's not going to just let me stream it. Now, obviously, The Last of Us, they're going to be doing an update for the PS4 for it. But I think it would be great if Microsoft could come up with a way of being able to play those old titles, on the 360 titles, 
on the Xbox One and not have us pay anything. They did that. I think that would be a huge boost to the faithful gamers who are looking to upgrade. Because a lot of people can't afford to keep their old console. They'll sell their old console to go new generation uh, and sell all their games. But if you could sell your 360 or your PS3, but keep titles and know that you're going to be able to play them on the new one, I think it would be an interesting option to do. Probably not going to happen. But that would be my like dark horse thing. If they did, I'd be like, cool. So let's talk Sony. So I think Uncharted 4 is obviously going to be the big, the big thing they're going to talk about. I think they're going to really hammer indie titles because they've been trying to court a lot of indie developers. So I think you're going to see a lot more indie, indie stuff from them. VR is going to be big for them. I think they're going to talk about like existing titles being converted or supporting VR, especially the new stuff. Uh, what all is going to be supporting their new VR stuff. Not that exciting to me, but, you know, and I'm assuming Last of Us, if it's not out already, the PS4 uh, version, they'll be definitely talking about it at some point. And it looks pretty impressive. They've been saying that the PS4 version, the graphics look like the cutscenes from the PS3. But your guys' thoughts, what do you think Sony's going to be up to? I think the same as you, really. Um, the VR stuff, ever since they announced that, they haven't really said much about it. Um, obviously, with Uncharted as well, I think they'll show gameplay of Uncharted. And um, I think they might show gameplay of The Last of Us as well, just so people can see what it actually looks like. Um, I think they might do some PS3 stuff as well, like maybe updating some stuff for the PS3 or some new games coming out for the PS3 that might not be coming out for the PS4. Giz, any thoughts on Sony? I want to see something Crash Bandicoot related. There was a lot I of see, rumors about that. Yeah. Of course, I don't know. Does I don't know if Sony does. They don't have the rights to it, do they? Isn't the, is does uh, didn't Naughty Dog That's Naughty sell? Dog, yeah. Didn't Naughty Dog sell it? Who did they sell it to? Did they sell um, it to Sony or did they sell it to somebody else? I don't know. I think they might still own it. I thought there was some. I don't. I thought they didn't own it anymore. The Crash Bandicoot stuff. I don't know if it was Naughty Dog sold the IP or Sony acquired it or what. I thought there was some issue there with who has Crash Bandicoot. Checking now. But yeah, I mean, I think obviously Sony's in the best position right now going in to e to the E3. They can say, hey, look, we've sold the most consoles. We told you our mission at last year's E3. We've stuck with that mission. We haven't flip-flopped. We haven't changed. Mm -hmm. We haven't had to do any of that kind of stuff. You know they're going to be taking the jabs left and right. Uh, the thing that always annoys me is I don't care about that kind of stuff. That's great, like little little E3 uh, video links you see on like YouTube or Reddit where they make a jab at one at each other. But for me, it's all about the games. What games is each one going to do? If Microsoft comes out firing and has a whole bunch of great titles, um, I mean, that's what's going to matter, at least to me and to the gamer. They're all going to have their exclusives. It's really just going to be who's got the stronger exclusives. Um, Crash was sold to Vivendi. Okay. That's what I thought, because I thought there was, some, there was a lot of rumors about something Crash... And I think Sony tried to squash it with like, look, hey, none of us have it, so sorry. There was some talk about them trying to get the rights back to it or something of that nature. So let's talk Nintendo. Now, I am not a huge Nintendo fan. I mean, I do enjoy like the Mario, Super Mario type stuff and the Mario Kart. Those are fun. Uh, I have not ever bought a Wii U. I have no desire. We still have an old Wii, but honestly, it, it never gets used. Um, it just sits there. So the only game that I'm assuming that we're probably going to hear about from Nintendo is going to be Metroid. Uh, and that's a series that I love, but I don't love it enough to want to get like a Wii U. Nintendo, very strong when it comes to the console market, you know, the handheld console. 
not doing very well when it comes to the 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 big console, the next gen console stuff. I mean, Wii U doesn't stand a chance and hasn't been able to compete against Xbox One or the PS4. So, I mean, I think they've got major work to do if they want to compete in that market. I think if I'm Nintendo, I would be like saying, "Look, we do great on the handheld. Let's keep going on that, but we need to just start selling Mario and all these things." for the Xbox and for the PS4 or whatever. We need to go their their consoles. They're beating us. We're not going to compete. Why not sell, I mean, six, what is it, five million Xboxes, like seven million PS4s? Let's sell Mario on those 12 million or plus consoles. What do you guys think about, Danny? What about Nintendo? Um, I have heard that, like, there's been rumors going around that they're thinking of releasing a new console. But it's not anything to do with the Wii, so it'd be a, a brand new console. So maybe th- there might be something about that. Um, other than that, I can't really think of anything Nintendo related that they might do. Kiz, any thoughts? On... I think there'll definitely be something Zelda related. If not uh, another remake, another HD remake, it's probably going to be something to do with the Zelda Warriors, the new Zelda game. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting. I mean, I'm sure they'll have a lot of great uh, titles for their uh, handheld. I tell you, if they come out with a new console, that almost that I mean, that to me that would be so foolish. I mean, the Wii U's not yeah, that old. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, if they I mean, have do... to already do it, I mean, it's almost like admitting that the Wii U is a complete failure. I do see the point about like maybe selling the like the games to like one of the other, if not both, just to have them open. I mean, like, uh, take Assassin's Creed, for example. That's on both consoles and, and PC. So that, to me, is what it should be. I hate this specific thing. So if they do sell it, they should sell it to both. That way, more people will be able to play the game. So you have both the consoles. Maybe someone has one PS4, maybe someone has an Xbox, then they can both play, you know, the, the stuff. But, on the other hand, I do see how keeping it to the Wii, it's just, selling it, I don't know, to me, just seems like, oh, they're selling out. But on the other hand, I do see that it, it the ship is almost sinking, in a sense, really. So it, it might make sense to like, Well, on. I mean, I, I just, the main reason to sell a console, or to have exclusives, is to sell your console. If they're only going to make their titles for the Wii, or the Wii U, you have to have those consoles. So you're selling consoles. But traditionally, consoles lose money. I know Nintendo's been a little bit better where they're a little bit more profitable with their consoles. Part of it being the fact that their consoles are never that cutting edge when it comes to the, the hardware or the graphics. I mean, the Wii, the big selling point, motion controller. Uh, but in, in, the innards of the Wii was really not much different than the uh, GameCube. So cost on that was definitely cheaper so they probably made a little bit more profit whereas Sony and Microsoft are losing money on these initial console sales but the the, the money is always in the games if I'm Nintendo I can just be done with this console this Wii U and, and Wii and just say you know what it's just not worth it we're not competing they're always beating us but there's a lot of loyal fans out there who want our titles that'll play them on the Xbox 360 or the Xbox One or the PS3 or the PS4. And they'll still, the ones that only have Wii U or Wii U can, can, can get them if we release for those. But let's just be a publisher. Let's sell Mario for the, you know, the Xbox One and the PS4. We're going to sell a ton. And the profit on software, is so the games, is so much higher. I think Nintendo at some point is going to have to do that. I just think they're too, I don't want to say arrogant, I think that they just don't want to admit that and they're going to continue to try it. And if they come out with another console, I think it's a huge mistake. I think it's just going to, I think, it, I think if they don't want to sell it through the other consoles, sell their titles, they should just stick with the, the drop the, the console, the, you know, the home consoles and just stick with the handheld. Cause that's what they're doing well in. And that's all they're doing well in. So uh, here's the big question. We talked about this before last E3. Right now, 
let's say you guys got the cash in hand to buy a console. You're going to buy one of the consoles. You can go into, insert your, your favorite game place or Amazon, whatever. You can buy yourself a PS4, an Xbox One with or without Connect, or a Wii U. I mean, you're buying one, or you know, you can buy one. What are you going to buy right now, Danny? I'm still going to go with Xbox One. But now, are you going to go console and Connect, or console without Connect? I'd go console with Connect. Okay. Giz, what about you? I would buy a PS3. If a choice between PS4 and Xbox, probably PS4. Okay. Nobody picking the Wii U. Didn't think didn't think anybody would. Now, obviously, I have both, so I can't be a, a judge on this. Uh, just to give comparisons on how I feel about both of them real quickly, they're both very nice. Uh, the PS4 is just... Um, it's... It's not as fancy looking, but it just works. You know, it's easy to get in, to boot it up. It's easy to launch your games. It's, it's not the most polished interface. Much better than the PS3. The PS3 inter- interface is, is utter garbage. Uh, it, it, it works, but it, it, just, it just isn't laid out very well. It's not very, it just doesn't look good. It's horrible. But it works. But the PS4 looks a lot nicer, and it, and it works well. Xbox One... The interface is very pretty, but there's just certain things that are kind of missing that they haven't really fixed or locked in. And then, but the connect when when you're using the connect and it works, which for the, for me it works most of the time. It's it's really nice. When it comes to the games, to be honest, they're both great. It's just really what you like gaming wise. If you're a Last of Us fan, get a PS4. If you haven't already played Last of Us, because it's going to be coming out for the PS4. But if you like Gears of War, if you like Halo. If you like the Microsoft exclusives, go that route. They're both great. All right, so we'll see how well we do on our E3 predictions. Uh, obviously, there's going to be stuff, I'm sure, from EA, from Ubisoft, and everything. We'll probably hear more about the division and things of that nature. Uh, but, I mean, it's we pretty much... I don't think we're going to be floored by like EA or Ubisoft or anything, because we kind of know what all's being worked on. I don't think any of the publishers are going to have any like knockout titles that we weren't aware of. So let's talk uh, deals of the week. Now, hopefully, you, one of you guys can bring this deal up to mention the actual titles. Uh, this is being recorded on the 13th, which is Tuesday. Uh, this airs on Saturday. So normally we, when we do a podcast, we've recorded on Thursdays. So it's easier to have deals of the week that'll be going during the podcast air. Right now, there's a bunch of daily deals. I mean, there's great deals if you were able to record, if you heard this when we're recording it. You can get Binding of Ice, I think, for 99 cents. I think Monaco is like a dollar or something. But those deals are all flash deals. There's a great deal for, was it Deep Silver, I think, that make... Um, Dead Island, uh, the uh, Saints Row the third and the fourth and all that stuff, the second, bunch of stuff. They've got an awesome hum- humble bundle, but it only goes for 24 hours. So this deal is lasts almost for a month. It's by Bundle Stars, and it's called the Turbo Bundle. These are all racing games, but what games are included in this bundle? There is Race, the WTCC game, plus Catrum Expansion. There is GTR FIA GT Racing, GTR 2 FIA, FIA GT Racing, Race On, Race Injection, GTR Evolution, and GTR Legends. That's a lot of racing. Well, this is the Turbo Bundle for Turbo Racing. It's two ninety nine US, I believe, one pound seventy seven, and uh, uh, something like that. Two pounds nineteen. Yeah, well, they must have raised the price a little bit because when I when I I grabbed it, it was like said you know one pound seventy seven. But then I of course it became two ninety nine. But they must raise the price a little bit for you guys. Uh, but still, three three dollars or less U.S. gets it for you. Two pounds or less or whatever gets you all these games. They come on Steam uh, Steam codes. Uh, I don't know like 
I'm not a huge racing fan, but you know, every once in a while I like to play them. Not sure if any of these are like all multiplayer, if they're all single player. Uh, I'm sure that there's probably something in here that's multiplayer. Uh, so if you're you know into racing games, check out this bundle. It's going to be going on for like 30 days almost. When you see this, it's probably in the low 20s. Uh, how many days are left? But really, really good, uh, good bundle with a bunch of games for hardly anything. These these types of deals like the humble bundles, bundle stars, all these things, great ways to build your collection uh, of games. Now you're not going to necessarily get like the latest. You're not going to like find a bundle stars or humble bundle that's going to have, say, uh, Watchdogs in it. At least not for a long time. But you can get some really good games and and at great prices, and you can't beat it. Yeah, that's a really good price for like five games. Uh, that's not even five. That's seven games. Yeah, that's a great deal. And I think there's like some extra content for some of those games too, so it's even more than just like the seven games. So anyway, uh, let's end the thing here with your guys' questions. So if you look in the description of this video, there's a link that you can click on to submit your questions. You can submit your questions in type form. You can record yourself as an audio file. You can also submit it as a video. The easiest way is just make your video on YouTube unlisted, send us a link to it. But you can also submit the, uh, you know, a Dropbox link to your video, your audio, or just type your question. We love video questions and audio questions because we can air them in the podcast. And today we actually have a video question. And this question is from Cody. And here's what Cody had to say. Hey guys, Cody here. What is your favorite day of the week? Personally, I prefer Saturdays. Thanks, bye. All right, so guys, what is your favorite day of the week? <coughs> Cody said Saturday. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so many to choose from. Um, Maybe Sunday, because that's like, for me, that's a... That's a, either F1 day or it's a football day for me. So it's like my sport day. Okay. Giz, still can't. <laughs> um, probably. I don't know. Like, <laughs> well, I can tell for Piper, her favorite day is uh sunday because she doesn't like mondays because those are manic mondays um and it's not like sunday because that's her fun day or I, she doesn't have to run day that was a butchered attempt at, at a song so hopefully somebody can correct that it's another manic monday I um, have to agree, at least for me. I think Saturday is a great one. I mean, I like Friday and Saturday. I mean, those would be my two. But I'd probably lean towards Saturday because it's like the whole day. is just you're able to relax. Plus, you don't have to worry. Like with Sunday, you know, that's when the next day is work, school, all that type of stuff. You know, and it's just like, ugh. So the only thing good about Sunday for me is like when it's football season, Sunday is usually when all the games occur. So I love Sunday football. But Saturday is my pick. Giz has not been able to pick. Giz loves um, every day. I pick... Um... <laughs> Munchy Wednesday Friday Saturday. So, Cody, I'm sorry, but Giz cannot commit. He loves every day of the week. I don't... Probably Saturday as well, I guess. Just... This has been forced to pick. <gasps> no, no, no! Sunday, because that's the day Game of Thrones is on. There you go. Is it really on Sunday, though, for you? Mm-hmm. Well, technically... Mm, uh -huh. mm, but it's Sunday for you, so technically I go on your time. I don't know if we should allow that, people. Should we allow Gizmo to say Sunday when he actually can't watch Game of Thrones until s Monday? Because that's... Technically, sir. Technically, sir. Technically, what if I can't watch it until next Sunday? Technically, then I would watch it on a Sunday. Okay, so then I think what we have to do, then from now on, you cannot watch Game of Thrones until the week 
after it airs in the U.S. But why would I do that? Well, you're just saying that technically you could do that to make Sunday, it still be Sunday and your favorite day, but you won't. You'll watch it on Monday. So hence, Monday is your favorite day for Game of Thrones. This will be my least favorite day. But it's Game of Thrones. Put your votes in the disc in here. Should Giz like Monday better, or should we stick with Sunday for Giz? Tell Giz what is his favorite day. So, our second question and our last question for the podcast. And this is from Jack. And he says, I don't want to rush you, but I'm wondering, could you guess the release date for the mole? P.S. So excited for the mole. All in caps. Could we guess the release date? Yeah, we could. Uh, the only thing I'm going to say about Mole is go back to the crew news. If you skipped forward to all the questions, go back to the crew news. That's all I'm going to say. Anything else from Fake Piper or Fake Extra? If Piper was here right now, what would she say? You moo. <laughs> if Extra was here right now, what would he say? Pete, someone's here. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that is it for episode 34 of the Crewcast. We hope to try to do these maybe monthly or so. We're not going to continue every week. It's just way too hard. And it's been longer than a week since we have did did one, but we'll try to do, or longer than a month, but we'll try to do maybe once a month or so. But let us know if you really want to keep seeing them. We know we've had some people say they don't like them, but we have a lot of people, uh, some of our our more adamant fans who still want them. So I like doing them, but I don't think a week, every week is worth it. It's just too much work. So we're thinking maybe every month. But anyway, this concludes episode 34 of the Crewcast. If you guys want to say goodbye. Bye. Bye. I can't please. Thanks for watching the crew cast. We hope you tune in again next time. Compass.